heathens. This is the fulfillment of a promise that I made a long time ago that I'm severely overdue with for Stubby Johnson. Uh, A.K.A. Squitma, which is supposed to be Squirt in AA. Yes, I did watch the video. Um, he wanted to know um, what took me from deism to atheism. Because I talked about in my deconversion story how I started off as a Christian and moved away from Christianity to become basically a deist, uh, well, a generic theist first, and then to a deist, and then agnostic, and then atheist. So in, instead of going, I've already done a video for agnostics. Uh, you can look that one up if you uh, if you need it. Let me know. I'll put the I'll put it up in the box there, but I'll, I'll leave it out for now unless somebody asks for it. It's, it's not too too long ago, so it shouldn't take it won't be too much for you to scan back at it, uh, answering an agnostics question. I think is what it's called. But uh, so what I'll do is, is I'll tell you how I went from deism to agnosticism because that's really basically the the same course of action. Uh, I will warn you, if you are a deist and you really don't feel like deconverting, um, the last uh, last time I put up the uh, the agnostic video, I had two agnostics who emailed me and said, okay, you convinced me, fine, I'm not agnostic anymore, I'm an atheist. So you may find yourself giving up deism here. Uh, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. This is really hard to explain, and that's why it took me so long to get to it. All right, I basically come to the conclusion that there was a higher power. Okay, now deism is a very broad um, span, so this this is uh, again it's going to be kind of hard to explain. But I come to this conclusion that there was a higher power, um, a god of some sort, and then it you know it existed, but it really didn't care what we did, and we just kind of went on about our way. I started looking at the world. You know, because I was trying to justify everything. Um, I tried to justify basically um, it, my my thoughts of the afterlife. You know, this is kind of where it came from. I I figured, all right, once you die, what happens? And my thoughts were that, okay, well, everything works in a cycle. We breathe in carbon dioxide. We breathe out oxygen. Plants breathe in oxygen, light out carbon dioxide. Everything has its cycle. So I figured when you decompose your minerals, your pieces, your whatever, breaks down and goes back into the big mixing pot and becomes something else later on. Not you. You don't have any, you know, cognitive uh, recovery of the events of your past life or nothing like that. Is that's, that's that's not how I thought it was. I just I just thought that you know you would go back into the mix and become other life, and that's still kind of how I see it, but not from any kind of metaphysical standpoint. Um, I I got to thinking about everything though. Of course, I you know fully accepted evolution um, as uh, how species came to be. Um, I was fairly convinced with the Big Bang, um, though I really had not looked into it because I really just didn't care. Uh, still, kind of don't, uh, to be honest with you. Um, but I noticed everything went backwards smaller. Everything simplified. It, it, it com continuously gets more and more complex. Species as a whole become more and more complex as time goes on. And we, we see this constantly. We don't see them breaking down into smaller pieces. We see them building up into bigger and better. And that's what the whole evolutionary tree shows us. Everything from intelligence to mobility and speed. And even humans today are faster than they were 10 years ago. And all that good fun stuff. Um, everything just seemed to get bigger and better as you went forward. It got smaller and less as you went backwards. So I kept going smaller and less, 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 all the way back to the beginning. And suddenly there's supposed to be this big, huge thing that controls it all and has some sort of a you know ability to the, to make it all happen. No, that wouldn't work. The reality of, of everything you see in this world, in our universe, is that everything breaks down into the smallest components. At no point does it suddenly start over with this big thing. Um, and there I was saying, well, there must have been a God that 
controlled it from that point. And I hit the who created God. So the only way that I could justify this this thought process was that, okay, well then the God is where we're headed. We're headed towards becoming gods and then we'll create our own little universes or whatever. And then that whole thing just kind of fell apart because if that's the case, I'm no God, no matter how advanced I become, if I create, if I become, if 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 uh, humans get the ability and we figure out how to actually create life in a lab, I'm not talking about test tube babies, although you can probably use that as an example. Um, if we were able to take amino acids and mix them together, and all of a sudden you create this life and, and you can make it evolve very quickly, and it becomes into its own little species and its own little world and its own little universe, and you know, we, we plant this life on Mars. Does that make us gods? No. And that's where the breakdown came from. There was no way for me to say, if I went back and there was some sort of thing and, and to create the cycle of what we see in the world, whatever it is that kicked off life and started this whole process, wouldn't be a god. It would simply be another thing. You know, if we're living in the grand fart bubble of some massive creature and we think we're big but we're really not, we're minuscule and we know that we're minuscule because you, if you've ever seen the video that I have in my favorites where, and a secular astronomer did this one as well, he posted it, where it's all the, all the planets of our solar system and then our puny little sun compared to other huge suns and that sort of thing, you realize we are tiny. And if we're just these little bacteria style puny things um, floating around in a fart bubble. Uh, I like the fart bubble. Um, you know, does that make the thing that farted us out a god? No, it doesn't. Just because our perception of something being bigger and greater than us, it just, it just doesn't make it a god. And that's when I broke away from the whole god thing. I said, okay, I just don't know. There was no way to figure it out, and so I was agnostic. But my agnosticism really just did not last very long. Um, to uh, to kind of give you the fast forward version, if you and again check out the other video and it, it, it explains it more. So um, what convinced me, uh, you know, at that point, and you can kind of see as I'm sitting there and I'm going, all right, well, if that's the way that it is, then there really couldn't be a god. So that's kind of the fast forward version of how I went from deist to atheist, and. Um, I hope that makes sense to you. And uh, you know, whatever. You know, a lot of people say that nature is God. Nature is not God. Nature is nature. Um, a tree growing is not God. You know, um, bees pollinating flowers is not God. It's that's just the way it works. For something to be called a God, it has to have some sort of a controlling factor, and and that's just not the way that we see things. We see it all just kind of flowing together and that's just kind of how it is you know um, anyway I've rambled too long on on this one uh, not that that's anything unusual but uh, thanks for listening and um, Stubby Johnson I hope that got you satisfied